So Royal Caribbean Cruise, Cruises Limited is the corporation. It's, it's the company. And the company has an interest in now seven brands. The biggest brand of the seven is Royal Caribbean International. Mm -hmm. So for many years until last year, I was overseeing the brand. I was responsible for the brand, sales, marketing, operations. And then last April, I moved to the parent company level and now work with a number of different areas in the company that support all seven of the brands. We are really everywhere in the world now. We're all over Caribbean, North America, Asia Pacific, Mediterranean, Northern Europe, all, all around Latin America, or everywhere, to Antarctica, to the Galapagos. Uh, there really isn't any region of the world that we don't touch at this point. It's a very complex business. There's a lot to it. There's a lot to hospitality. So if you're in the hotel business, you're in a pretty complicated business. There's also a lot to the marine or maritime business. If you're in the shipping business, you're in a pretty complex business. But when you put those two things together, mm -hmm. you have something special. Mm -hmm. And to have 60 of our 66,000 employees working on ships, sailing around the earth to close to 500 different destinations, way over 100 countries, guests coming from everywhere, crew coming from everywhere, dealing with all kinds of different jurisdictions, trying to give people the vacation of a lifetime. It's an amazing business. We're very prominent in terms of our offices and our employees, both in Miami-Dade County and in Broward County. We have installations all over South Florida. This is our headquarters here on the Port of Miami. So that's where most of management is directing the business. And so when the ships are calling here at Port Miami, it brings economic benefit every time a ship comes into the port. And then we are supporting, or we have as suppliers, let's say, many, many local businesses that do all kind of different interesting things from supplying produce to tuning pianos to who knows what mm -hmm. that uh, benefit the entire community. We have many relationships long-standing in nature with United Way, with FIU, with University of Miami. Uh, and we do charitable efforts throughout the year like Give Day, which we've done at, under, uh, at inner city schools. We've done it at local parks where up to 1,000 to 1,500 of our people and their families will literally transform a place in, in the space of 9 or 12 hours. We do that once a year here. And so we, as one of the largest companies in the, in the community, we have many tentacles that benefit the community. Also, virtually every one of our officers, which is dozens, some several dozen of our officers who are based here at headquarters, uh, they serve on at least one community board, nonprofit board. Uh, and that's been a boon to the community because the, the business acumen that our people have is very useful in a nonprofit context. And I, I, there are many examples of where we've really helped out different entities to, to thrive and to, to, to pursue their cause because of the work of our people. The market for cruising is determined by supply and demand like basically every other market. So there's a certain amount of berths on offer doing different things and there's a certain amount of interest in the public to consume those vacations and that's really what determines the price more than the price of any one element of cost like fuel. I mean fuel is an important cost item but so are travel agency commissions and labor expense and food and so forth. So uh, I would say cruise pricing is not driven by fuel price as much as it is by supply and demand balance. For some people, flying to the Caribbean and staying in a resort is the ultimate. But what we see in our research across many, many years is that cruising consistently generates the highest satisfaction levels of any vacation type. So not specifically comparing it to any one alternative. People just love their cruises. So most people take vacations on land and about three or four percent of vacations 
occur on the water. The attractions of taking a cruise vacation are tremendous value for your money. You get a lot for your ticket price. You get, of course, your accommodations. You get your meals. You get your entertainment and many of your activities. And you get taken from place to place to place. In the case of Miami, either around the Bahamas or around the Caribbean. And you're not packing and unpacking all the time. So it's a, a many of the hassles of, of traveling and vacations are taken out of the equation by a cruise experience. You are service personnel get to know you, which is fairly unusual for the vacation industry. So if you're in the dining room, uh, very like within one night, your, your wait staff personnel will know if you're the kind of person who wants to have a Coca-Cola waiting for you at dinner, bingo, there it is, the second night and the third night and the fourth night, as you like it. And you would normally develop a, a friendly banter with your stateroom attendants, which is something that just doesn't happen in the hotel context at all. So there's a lot of personal service, which is really top-notch, very friendly, very engaging and fun for the guests. And, and you put all that together, and it's a very compelling vacation experience.